Hi everyone, I'm Tammy from the blog Nutmeg Notebook and I teach people how to eat that are following a whole food plant-based no oil diet. So thanks for joining me today. This is actually my Tuesday with Tammy series that I've been doing. My husband Tom is going to join us and he will be on the computer and he is going to moderate the comments for us. So if you have a question, you can put it in the comments. Today's topic is all about tips for weight loss. So I get a lot of emails and private Facebook messages from people asking me for help to help them lose weight because they know that I was successful in losing weight on a whole food plant-based diet. At, oh, I didn't get a picture, one of the before pictures. Do you want to go grab a before one, picture? I'm waiting to turn off. This. Okay. When I turn and this on, it's going to make a noise. Yeah, I have to turn and that's in, in the office. Okay. Um, so, sorry, we had a lot of last minute things happening around here today. So, anyway, I, I at my highest, I weighed 174 pounds. I was wearing a size 16. I think the one year for Christmas, I did buy a size 18 dress, but you know, I was so embarrassed I cut the tag out of it before I took it to the cleaners because, you know, like the cleaners wasn't going to see that I gained a lot of weight. But anyway, and now I'm a size four, and you know, being a size four is certainly much more healthy. You know, it's a lot more fun to buy clothes when you're a size four. four. And, you know, being a size four is certainly much more healthy. <laughs> you know, Thank you. You always need to shut the volume off before we start or something. Uh, so anyway, so today I'm going to try to address a lot of the questions that I get from people in emails and Facebook and Instagram about what I do to lose the weight. So uh, first, I just want to say that, uh, well, if you, if you would share this, that would be great. So share it on your Facebook page or in a group if you belong to a whole food plant-based group or a weight loss group. Help us reach more people. That would be fantastic. And subscribe, click on the little bell there, and you'll get notifications every time we do a live or have a new video up. And we appreciate you helping us with that. I'm not a medical professional. And this information that I'm sharing today is not a substitute for getting medical advice from your own personal physician. And you should consult your physician before you adopt any type of new food or lifestyle changes. So there we've said that. My very first tip is stop dieting. Seriously, dieting doesn't work. I was a yo-yo dieter for almost four decades and I could lose the weight on any of those. You were very successful. At I was very successful. Several, several times. <laughs> but that's the problem is I had to keep going back and doing it again and again because I could not maintain a weight loss. I think the longest I did was for two years. And you know, if, if you're listening to this, it's probably because you can relate to that. So this time around, after having adopted a whole food plant-based lifestyle, you're gonna go get that picture out of my office. Was that a friendly reminder? Would you please? <laughs> I'm gonna go get the picture now, I'll be right back. I think there, the folder's there on the, the weight bench. Um, so this time around, I just thought I am not, this is not a diet. I am making a lifestyle change because I didn't want to just lose weight, I wanted to lower my cholesterol, which I did. It went from like 145 down to 98. And I wanted to sustain a healthy lifestyle. I, I wanted to prevent Tom from uh, his family history of cancer. So for us, it really was not just about the weight. It was also about our health. And, you know, I just turned 60, he just turned 65. It, it, we have three little grandkids under the age of three, and we want to be here for the long haul. And we don't want to be a burden to our kids or our grandkids. We want to be thriving, not just living, but we want to be thriving as we age. And so this is so much more about a lifestyle than it is just about the weight. And you know, the weight is just a happy side effect. So when I looked up the definition of diet, this is what the dictionary said. A regimen of eating and drinking sparingly 
so as to reduce one's weight by going on a diet. That just sounds awful, doesn't it? Deprivation. So Read, read that again. What does it say? It says a regimen of eating and drinking sparingly, sparingly so as to reduce one's weight by going on a diet. And I've been on those kind of diets, and it's horrible, and that's why they don't work, because you can't sustain it for the long term. So for me, I threw the word diet and dieting out the window because it evokes all or nothing thinking for me. Because in the past, I was either on a diet or off the diet. And if I wasn't on the diet, that meant I was really eating everything and anything in big quantities, usually preparing to go on a diet the following Monday. So when you focus on your healthy habits, and your lifestyle rather than your weight. It's a lot of pressure, I think, is released. You don't feel like you're deprived. I try to think of every time I'm eating, is the food helping me or hurting me? Is it helping me to achieve my goals? And I find that that is very, very helpful. Um, Let's see, I gotta look at my notes. Oh, and typically when people go off their diet, I just, you know, this happens a lot. And your friends will say to you, you know, I'm so off the wagon or I totally blew it. I really went off my diet. Well, I'm not on a diet, so I can't go off because I'm on a lifestyle. And so I can't go off my lifestyle. This is the lifestyle that I've chosen. So how I think of it is, and Chef AJ teaches this in her Ultimate Weight Loss group, is your choices are good, better, and best. And so that's how I look at it. Like maybe my lunch choice one day is just good and not best. Or maybe it's better, but not best. And that doesn't mean I'm going to throw in the towel on the whole day and let the whole day be like that. That's just one meal. Or Dr. Doug Lyle talks about how you can have A, B, and C choices. And maybe maybe one day you have you know stellar straight A days. Maybe all of your days aren't straight A. Maybe sometimes you make a B choice or even a C choice. But that's just one choice out of you know. 21 choices for the week, 21 different meals. That's just one. That doesn't mean that you need to turn the whole day into a C, a D, or let it go to an F. And so I find that to be very helpful too. So I, if I make a choice to eat something maybe that isn't weight loss friendly, I don't think of that as uh, going off plan or that I've gone off the wagon. I just think of that as it's either a B choice or maybe it was just, just a good choice and not a better choice. So I think that that really helps. So the mindset and what you're thinking is really important because your thoughts are always with you. And who do you listen to the most but yourself? And so I, I just find that the talk, the self-talk that I have, the words that I use, and the way that I look at my lifestyle makes a huge difference in my ability to be successful with it. So, so what would happen if you thought of it as just adopting a healthy lifestyle instead of thinking that, it's going, that you're going on a diet? Because the truth is, the way that you eat to lose the weight is the way that you're going to need to eat to sustain and maintain that weight loss. And people ask me a lot like, well, did you, you know, add in back in more food once you got to your goal weight? And the answer is no, because actually I need less calories now than I did when I weighed 174 pounds just to sustain myself. I just need fewer calories because I'm so much smaller than I used to be. And so, no, I didn't get to add back in more food, more calories, unless it's very low calorie density and vegetables. So, you know, when you're smaller, you need fewer calories. So think of every bite 
a food you're eating as either helping you or hurting you. And um, if you do eat something that's, let's say, is just a good choice, not better or best, or it's a B or C choice, you know, don't, don't throw in the towel and make the rest of the day be off plan or whatever you want to call it or C or D choices, instead do the next right thing. And that's what I tell people when they uh, send me an email. I just say, just turn around now and do the next right thing. And if it's time for the next meal, then go ahead and eat. Don't deprive yourself of that meal. Just make that meal really heavy on vegetables, but also have your starch so that you have satiety and Mentally, that will help you. Physically, that will help you because you're feeding yourself the right fuel and you'll feel in control again. So, you know, don't, I like Chef AJ says, um, let a bad day be good data. So if you do have some choices that aren't stellar one day, think about what led up to those choices and what can I do differently next time? So it's a learning, growing experience when you do choose something that maybe you wish later you hadn't. And it's much easier to not take the first bite, I will tell you. So once you've been eating a whole food plant-based diet and you've been eating healthy, that food that you used to covet really doesn't taste as good to you anymore it's kind of interesting so you know sometimes you'll think you know oh i wish i could have xyz and if you had a bite of it it probably wouldn't taste as great to you as you had remembered so we we do neuroadapt and we get used to low sugar healthy food and then that's what starts to taste really good to us okay so the next thing is that preparation trumps motivation. We all know that we have a limited supply of motivation. You know, when we first start out on the new food plan, we're so excited and dedicated and, you know, we're thinking about the possibilities. And so we, our motivation is really high, but you know, that starts to dissipate over time. And so you really have to be prepared, which we did a video recently all about our fast food and Tom can link to that it was one of our tuesdays with tammy and it was all about how to make fast food that is healthy that you can have in your refrigerator or in your freezer and how you can do that so that you always have healthy choices available because if you don't have the healthy choices available easily when you're tired and you're lacking motivation you're going to reach for the highest calorie whatever it is that's in your pantry or your fridge and that can lead to disaster so preparation is so important you know years ago i belonged to weight watchers and they always said fail to plan plan to fail tom do you have a comment or a question we have a couple of questions okay. uh pat is asking uh, about a specific product are corn tortillas okay to eat if you're in trying to lose weight if you're in the weight loss process you know, I did include them when I was losing weight and they didn't affect me, but I didn't eat them every day. You know, they are a little more processed than, of course, eating corn on the cob because you have to chew the corn on the cob and the corn tortillas have already been processed and broken up, so they're much easier to eat. They can be a trigger for some people, so you just have to experiment and see what works for you. But, you know, I would have them maybe, maybe I had them like once a month or so to have some tacos or I would use, use them in, as a, um, uh, to put like a veggie burger in or something if I wanted to kind of make like a little wrap. And so it just depends on the individual and certainly on maintenance. I have them occasionally and Tom makes really great chips. You may have seen the video that we just posted for healthy chips and guilt-free chips and salsa. And we do buy the corn tortillas. We just make sure that they are just corn. And usually there's, it's like lime juice 
that's in them. So there's the um, brand that Costco, our Costco has, Mi Rancho. They also sell those at Whole Foods. Trader Joe's has a really clean one. Whole Foods has their own brand, 365. So you just wanna make sure that they don't have oil and a bunch of salt or a bunch of chemicals in them. And we like to buy organic ones. So then the, we know the corn is non-GMO. A comment on the chips. Uh, yeah. I don't know if this kind of falls under good, better, or best. Uh, we have those chips always with a meal. It's not like buying or having a bag of chips mm -hmm. in the pantry. Mm -hmm. We make enough chips to take care of what we're gonna eat um, uh, on that particular meal. Right. And when they're gone, they're gone. We make them ourselves in the, in the air fryer. So the big plus on, on that technique is there is no oil and there is the, no salt. So that kind of throws them into the better category. But um, uh, yeah, so anytime that you air fry something or dehydrate something, so like those are moist when we start out and then they're crispy. So we've taken out some of the water that increases the calorie Dense, density but when they're gone they're of them gone. right and so it's easier to overeat on the things that are higher calorie density and so you know you want to be cautious when you start making chips and that kind of thing with them but you just have to experiment and see what works for you because i know some people who can't eat the corn tortillas in a moderate fashion so it just depends on what works for you and certainly if you try them and you can still lose weight i'm kind of a results-based person so if it's working for me and i'm getting the results i want great then i know i can continue to do it if it's not working for me then i know i need to change something up and on that note uh, we have a, a question and i apologize in advance i'm going to try ravni uh, or ravine on on her first name enunciation what if you aren't losing weight you are eating a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, she's gained five pounds, um, but she, and she's also on insulin um, and usually gains weight when she's on insulin. Um, my, my comment on that, and this kind of falls back to last December or so, um, I, was, I, I had a few extra pounds that I wasn't used to carrying, and we identified that those pounds were coming from too many almonds too many almonds. I was in the habit of having almonds as a snack. Um, I was also putting some um, ground walnuts or in my morning cereal, and I was also having uh, extra firm tofu on a regular basis in the, in my soups. And just by eliminating those three things, which were high fat, high they're calorie all high density, fat, high calorie, and the almonds were the worst because those, you know, I would pretend I was just going to get a handful out of that big bag from Costco. I have to confess that's not how it really went. <laughs> so I actually asked Tammy to stop buying those and then uh, actually in short order after eliminating those three things, my weight corrected back to my normal 160 that I maintain. So, yeah. so um, Dr. Neil Barnard has an excellent book about diabetes and a whole food plant-based diet. So check your local library or you can order it on Amazon and it's full of really great information for diabetics and how to navigate a whole food plant-based diet. So a good thing is good thing to do is to keep a food journal and see, you know, where you think you might have some problems or where you might be able to adjust some things. Uh, we heard Dr. Barnard speak a few years ago and he, when he was talking about weight loss, he suggested that if you were wanting to lose weight to eliminate the higher calorie density foods, the ones that are higher in fat. And one of those would be tofu, nuts, nut butters, avocado. So um, there, there's one other piece too. Um, uh, that's a high calorie density and that's bread. There mm -hmm. are breads that are healthier than others, but one thing that we're real consistent on is we don't have bread around the house. We don't have bread as even an inter, as it, not even really an occasional part of our yeah. diet. Well, it's like 1400 calories a pound yeah. bread is. So, so. I, and I it's know, full of sodium as well. Yeah, so a lot of folks will buy, well, you know, a, a least worst type of bread mm -hmm. 
and add that in here and there, but that's another thing that's really completely eliminated from our whole food plant-based diet. It's really, you know, substantially whole it. food plant-based. Yeah, and, and we don't miss it. Not I don't point, miss bread. No. You probably did yeah. in the beginning. But all, the, all the processed foods we're eating are processed pretty much right here in this kitchen. Right. So you want to um, make sure that when you open your refrigerator that you can see lots of healthy food choices to choose from. I like to put everything in clear containers so that when we open the refrigerator we can see, oh, that's rice, that's potatoes, that's salad, there's strawberries, you know, you get the idea. Uh, so those, when I open up the refrigerator, those healthy things are what I see that I have to choose from. The same with the freezer, uh, the same with the pantry. You know, we just, we just don't keep things around that we don't want to eat because when you're tired, when you're stressed, you know, it's too easy to give in to those kinds of things. So, and you're going to post that, a link to the video for the fast food that we did. The fast food video. Okay. Yeah. You're going to post um, a link for that. Yeah. Um, I, Penny, the California balls vinegar, does, she's asking, does it have any added sugar? It does not have added sugar. Yeah. Tammy, can you explain about yeah, the sweetness of it though? Yeah, it is. The balsamic vinegars are like a reduced vinegar. They're low acidity. They're only 4% acidity where regular vinegars are 6%. So they're thick and syrupy. And because they're more condensed, they do have a lot of natural sugar, but it is from the grape must, they call it. Um, I think it has about nine grams per tablespoon. So, but it is, there's no added sugar. The California Balsamics has one flavor that they have added a little bit of maple syrup to, but it says that right on their website. So they are a higher sugar because they are reduced and thick and syrupy, but that also means that you need less of it. So I probably use one to two tablespoons in my salad, and I try to only have it like once a day to use the vinegars once a day, just because I don't wanna have a lot of, even though it's natural sugar, I just don't wanna have a lot of that sugar in my diet because I don't want it to cause me to crave more sugar. Um, I have a question from Pat about beverages. So on a whole food plant-based, healthy, optimized for weight loss lifestyle, what beverages really fit well into yeah. that? Water and herbal tea. Really. So that doesn't include any kind of soda? No. Of any kind? No. With or without sugar? No. So no we soda? Don't, we don't. We don't. <laughs> Yeah, well, I so, gave a. I I used to drink diet soda. He used to drink regular soda, and we gave that up probably like years before we went whole food plant based. Um, just based on just the high calorie. You know, when you drink your calories, your brain doesn't register them like it does when you chew and eat food, and so like a regular soda, even if it says it's organic and natural, that is just liquid calories. And what are you getting? Where, where's the nutrition? So we try to eat a nutrient dense diet that is low calorie density because everything that we eat, we want it to have something of value in it. We want it to be nurturing to our body. We want it to be giving us, you know, vitamins and nutrients that we need. So, um, and we just don't, we don't have room in our diet to be consuming calories through liquids. So, and the, you know, the more sweet you have, the more sweet you want. And so if you drink that sweet beverage, then, you know, maybe later when your blood sugar takes a dip because it's going to have a bit of a high when you first have that sugary drink. And then when it takes a dip, then you feel like, oh, I need, I need more. And so we just don't, we don't, it's a personal choice, but that's our choice. And certainly for weight loss, you don't want to be drinking your calories. You want to be eating your calories. You want to chew. You want to have fiber 
and water because you want the stretch receptors in your stomach to expand and for that to, to be able to tell your brain, oh, we had food and we're full. So I don't recommend that you drink your calories. Yes. Um, are we, I, I, I have a, a comment here from Eileen. Ah, but we have oat muffins. I, I think she means we gave up bread, but we do have our oat muffins. We do. Less those processing. Are, yeah, those, those are not high in sodium. Uh, we don't eat those every day. I make those and I put them in the freezer and we, ate, we have one of those occasionally, but I, you know, we don't keep them made all the time. I made them this past weekend because we're traveling. And so we take those with us when we travel or when we're hiking. Um, because they're portable, but they're also made from uh, the um, oats and quinoa, and you know they're full they, of. They've replaced for me. I used to buy the Cliff Bars, mm -hmm. which were full of all kinds of Nasty extra stuff. additives and yeah. sugar and very high calorie and and uh, isolates of this mm -hmm. and that. Yeah. And so the 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 very dense. Oh, muffins do a great job yeah, of replacing them. Because they have steel cut oats in them. I mean, they're basically, they're like having a bowl of oatmeal, but we have it in a muffin shape. Okay, next question. Um, yes. Can you freeze the hearty lentil vegetable stew? Oh, yes, we freeze it all the time because that makes a huge amount. And for those that you of you that don't know, the hearty lentil vegetable stew. We have a video on that. Tom can post a link to that. We have a blog post on it. You need an eight quart pressure cooker to make it in or cut the recipe in half because it fills the eight quart and it freezes beautifully. Okay, so the other thing I want to say is like, you know, have fruit out on your kitchen counter. Uh, when we go to the grocery store, we get the sweet little tomatoes that we use in our salads. I wash those when we get them home and I put them in a bowl. So we always buy extra so we can have a bowl of them sitting out. So we are always surrounded by delicious, healthy food. We have, we'll have bananas and peaches and plums, pears sitting in a bowl out. So all we see in our environment, and this is probably a good time to talk about environment, is to have a really clean environment and to have food around that evokes what we want, which is a healthy lifestyle. And we want to feed our bodies with that healthy food. So that's what we surround ourselves with in our house. If you can automate your meals, it makes life so much easier. So by that, I mean like Tom eats the exact same breakfast every day. That way he doesn't have to think about it. He likes it. You, you will crave the things that you habitually eat. So if you habitually eat healthy food, healthy food is what you will crave. Isn't that fantastic? So he eats his oats and chia seeds and hemp seed and banana and blueberry mm -hmm. breakfast with his almond milk every day of the week. We're getting ready to go on a trip. You want to grab your bag. And he has prepped what he eats for breakfast so we can take it with us. This is, this is a whole week's worth. Um, so, but each bag, each serving is ready to go. And uh, the uh, shelf stable almond milk is in the bag, mm -hmm. uh, chili. So we're ready to hit the road tomorrow with this. Because so that's a third of my meal for an that's a third of my food intake for an entire week right right here right there and so you know that just saves on time and thought and decision fatigue because he doesn't have to think about what am i going to have for breakfast he just knows that that's what he eats for breakfast and we have blueberries and bananas that we're going to take with us and it just makes it easier then for one meal a day both of us eat a one pound chopped salad. And that's, so there is seven meals each. So 14 meals out of the week. We don't have to think about what are we gonna eat? We just know that one meal every day is a salad. And so we make salads once a week and put them in our containers. And we, we have a video about that. 
Tom can post a video mm. about the batch prepped salads. So the only thing that we have to think about, because I don't, I don't eat breakfast. Actually, well, I do eat breakfast. My first uh, meal of the day is lunch, and that's noon, and that's when I'm breaking my fast. And that's just because I discovered I wasn't hungry in the morning. And that's another tip. Only eat when you're hungry if you have the ability to do that. I know some people you know, have jobs where you can't do that. You have to eat your lunch at a certain time. But I realized that I was just eating breakfast out of habit, that I really wasn't hungry. We get up and we go for a four mile walk in the morning and I don't like to eat before that. And I was noticing that when I got back, I really wasn't hungry. So why was I eating? You know, what happens if I wait until I'm actually hungry to eat? And that turns out that that's usually lunch. Now, Sometimes I do get hungry at 10 o'clock. Maybe I didn't eat enough food the day before, and so I might get hungry at 10 o'clock, and then I'll go ahead and eat something. And usually it's vegetables, but sometimes I'll just grab a sweet potato and, and I'll have that. But I notice that when I do that, then I can't eat my whole salad at lunchtime. Then I, you know, I'll get like two thirds the way through or something, and I'm full and I can't eat anymore. So, so anyway, automating breakfast and one meal of the day for a salad, which is something that Dr. Furman taught us because we were following him when we first adopted a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And that gets in tons of nutrients, lots of fiber and lots of water and tons of vegetables because we add stuff to the top of it. So after we've chopped the salad, and added some things to it, it usually weighs around two pounds. Yeah, we, we are never hungry. I know. The word they use is, you know, eat, eat until you're satiated. That's not a problem yeah, here. Yeah, until you're comfortably yeah. full. So I love, that. I love this next statement. Okay. So that makes that real easy. And then, you know, for the dinner ideas in the video that we did for fast food, you can see we eat soup, stew, chili, zucchini noodles, veggie burgers. Usually already prepared and in the freezer ready to grab at a moment's notice, hence the title on that particular uh, Tuesday with Tammy, uh, our, our fast food. Yeah, and we batch prep every week so that we always have food ready in the refrigerator to grab and eat. Last night I didn't get home until about seven and you know it was very easy. When I was driving home, Tom, made some smashed potatoes in the air fryer for me. I hadn't finished my salad from lunch, so I had my salad that I could eat. I mean, it was just it was just easy to put it together. And that's the way we like it. We keep it simple. You know, there's that kiss, keep it super simple method. That's what we do. It doesn't take us a lot of time. So, yeah, this is really interesting. When you have too much variety, it creates the buffet effect and it stimulates your appetite and makes you to want more food. So um, in this book, this is a great book if you wanna know more about a whole food plant-based weight loss plan, I highly recommend John McDougall's program for maximum weight loss. So he wrote this years ago, but everything in it is still relevant and he said that's why he's never updated the book because there's no need to because everything he wrote is still true today. So he talks about how um, when you stimulate your appetite by a lot of variety that you end up eating a lot more food. So I just thought, oh, that is so interesting. That is so true. So I highly recommend this. This is an excellent book. That's on the Amazon read. page, right? Yeah, about I, maximum weight loss. Okay, I just put a link to the Amazon page um, on the uh, on on the description, which may not show up for you folks until after the video is over. You'll be able to find this in the video description and these other items. She's going to have me go back and put in. Um, I do have a couple of questions if okay. you're ready with that segment. Sure. Um, there is a question about uh, do you use coconut milk in any of your recipes? No, I don't. So coconut milk has saturated fat in it, although it is a whole food on its own. You'd be better off eating the coconut, but it does have saturated fat, not good for cholesterol. 
I tend to, my body tends to make a lot of cholesterol and we don't use coconut milk. You can use unsweetened almond milk and you can add just a tiny bit of coconut flavoring or coconut extract and that will give you that same flavor if you want. And there's other ways to make creamy soups if that's what you're using it in or a curry. You know, you can take uh, a, like a Japanese sweet potato or a hen and yam that's been oven roasted so that a lot of the natural sugars come out in it and you can add that to a, a soup, a stew, or, or a sauce and then blend it in a high-powered blender and that will give you creaminess. If you do nuts, if you're not doing weight loss, if you do like a cashew cream or something, that can be a substitute for it, but um, the like for heart health, for cholesterol, and certainly for weight loss, then you know coconut milk is not a good choice because of the the higher fat in it. Um, I do yes. Um, okay, are you done with coconut milk? I am. Okay, um, back to the California balsam mix. This is from Rita. Mm -hmm. um, we discussed that they have you know a natural to sugar. Them. Okay. Um, are they, do they all taste sweet or do they actually taste savory? Oh, he has a whole line of ones that are more savory than sweet. So there's a habanero. We have a whole video. You, you can post the video. We have a whole video and yeah, I, it's, I tell you. Yeah, it's Tammy, it's all about vinegar mm -hmm. is the title. And she goes over quite a number of the flavors I and do. how they're used in her cooking. Yeah, they, if you go on his website, and look, you'll see that he has a he has developed a whole line of savory ones that he adds fresh herbs to. A lot of the herbs he grows himself. So there's basil, there's a curry, there's um, dill mustard seed, uh, a cilantro one. Now they still have a little bit of sweetness to them because uh, those are made with a white balsamic which is, I, I feel like it's not as sweet as the darks. And then he adds the fresh herbs to them. So they're not as sweet as say the ones that have fruit, a fruit flavor. So, but I have a whole video about it. You can also see on the blog, I have a, um, a blog post all about California balsamic. And if you put my name in the little comment section on the checkout, you'll get two free sample size bottles and also write in there the flavors that you want. I don't have any kind of an affiliation with Thomas at California Balsamic other than we just love the products and it's a little family run business. Him and his wife Ethel are amazing and we just really enjoy promoting them. Yes. What about fruit snacks at night time? You know, um, the fruit is certainly healthy. You should always allow about three hours between the bite of food, the, your last bite of food, and the time you go to bed so that it's not disrupting it becomes your sleep. And I use it as, as you like we fruit. eat our dinner and then we eat fruit right away. Yeah. It's, it's part of the meal. Right. If we're going to have fruit, we do it right at the end of our evening meal and then we stop eating and don't eat because we don't want to be no. eating right up until bedtime. And if you, you know, you don't need those calories right before you go to bed, they're just going to get stored as fat. So unless you're very active into the evening, it's a good idea to stop eating at dinner time and to have at least three hours between your last bite and the time that you go to bed. Otherwise, you can't burn those calories off. So there we go. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about too is the scale. Stay off the scale. You know, we become a little scale monkey and the scale getting on it every day looking for a weight loss can foul people up. So if the scale doesn't reflect what you think it should, then that might send you, you know, wanting to go eat something that maybe you shouldn't because you're frustrated. Or it can have the opposite effect if you have a, a significant weight loss. Some people tell me that then that makes them think, Ooh, great. I'm doing so good. I can have a treat. And you know, that kind of defeats the purpose. Plus, once you get to maintenance, you're not going to be getting that hit from getting on the scale and seeing the scale go down. 
So you need to look at other ways to judge your progress. So how do your clothes fit? Are your rings getting loose? Are your pants getting loose? Is your, you know, are you going in the next hole on your belt? Uh, you know, are people giving you compliments? You know, go by those kinds of things to determine how your weight loss is going and maybe only weigh yourself once a month if you can. And Dr. Doug Lyle says if you are going to weigh yourself, you should weigh yourself three days in a row and then average those out because, you know, you might have more water retention one day, you might be, you know, full of food, more full of food one day. Your weight can fluctuate so, so much. And you always want to weigh yourself at the same time of day when you do weigh yourself. So actually, in when I took uh, Chef AJ's Ultimate Weight Loss class, the mastery class, uh, JP, her partner in that program, suggested that we all get rid of our scales and or at least ask our significant other to hide them. So Tom hid ours for a few months and it was freeing to not have that scale, to not, I, like I had no idea where it was so I, I couldn't go and cheat, I couldn't go and get on it and that it was a wonderful thing for me because then I could just focus on being healthy and you know making good choices and I could just judge how I was doing by how my clothes were feeling and how I was how I was feeling myself. Why so. don't you go ahead and, and finish the 10 things you had ready and then we'll okay. come back through and we'll, we'll work through the remaining questions with that yeah. one. Yeah. Now the scale, I told her, don't even bother looking for it because you'll never find she, it. She she could never reach it where I where I hit oh, it. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a clue. There is a clue. Yeah. So you know, judge yourself by like if you're exercising and you're upping your game at exercising. You know, how much easier is it to go up the stairs since you've lost some weight, or since you're getting healthier and exercising more, or maybe you're a runner and you can run further, or you're riding your bike and you can you know bike further or you can go faster or you know judge it by that and how you're feeling it the scale you know is a funny thing like what what is it really telling you and it varies during the day and it's oh the scale is just it can be a really bad thing you guys stay off the scale okay number nine don't use food as entertainment so you know I do like to cook and before I went whole food plant-based, I think I did use food a lot as entertainment. Whether I was bored, happy, sad, mad, glad, you know, it didn't really matter. Like food was the thing to go to or it was a distraction to be cooking or baking something. And there's so many other things in life that we can use to get our dopamine hit because, you know, we get a chemical, we have a chemical reaction when we eat. We get a, a dopamine cascade. Uh, a chemical that's released in the brain and it's a feel-good chemical when we eat something and the more high calorie density a food is the bigger dopamine hit we get that's why we're, we're so drawn to those high calorie density foods you know that have a lot of fat oil sugar salt in them we get that a, a really big dopamine hit but you can get a dopamine hit from other things like little kids. Have you noticed they can just play for hours and hours and hours and not even think about food. And that's because they're getting so much pleasure from playing and laughing and interacting with one another that they don't even think about food. And so we need to be more childlike in that regard. And we need to use all the things that are around us as our hits for dopamine go outside be in nature go for a walk go for a bike ride listen to beautiful music play with kids pet a dog do a craft learn something new um, you know it, it can be spending some time on the computer in a chat room it can be you know calling and talking to your mother it can be all kinds of things where you can get your dopamine hit. So you make your food a little more boring and make your life a little more exciting and have food be your fuel and then everything else 
is for pleasure because the dopamine hit that we get when we eat something that we really think is delicious, that only lasts for a few seconds and then it's gone. It's over, you know? And so it's just not worth it to give in to those foods for such a short little amount of pleasure. Great happiness comes from being really healthy, having the, the health and the body that you deserve. That gives you long-term pleasure, long-term happiness. Food is fleeting that, you know, you put it in your mouth and swallow and then the flavor is gone. And so I just, I always try to remember that. And I just think, you know, there, I've tasted just about everything at this point in my life. There really isn't anything that I need to taste to go, you know, that's high calorie density to go, oh, you know, I don't want to miss out on that. It's just food and, you know, food's either hurting you or helping you. And so I just prefer to put the things in my body now that help me and not hurt me. Number 10 is to get off caffeine and to get plenty of sleep. So Tom recently, how many months has it been now since you gave up caffeine? You gave up coffee. Was that in kind of March-ish? Oh, it was, it was, it was early in the spring, you're right. Because yeah. you, before we went to Southern California, you were off of it. Mm -hmm. So caffeine has um, a really long afterlife. So even when you just drink it in the morning, it can still disrupt your sleep in the evening. Wireless mics. So when this happens when we're recording, Tom just cuts it out and it's not a big deal. Okay, somebody let us know the sound is back. Oh okay. yeah, we're getting yays. Yay, okay. thank you. Sorry you guys, the batteries Hopefully went... Hopefully that run on, didn't run on too long. Yeah, the batteries so. went dead. I'll, I'll edit that out of the replay so we won't have that dead spot. Yeah, that's good. So um, anyway, I don't know how long it took me to lose the weight because I wasn't keeping track of it. So it may have taken me like six months. I, when we first went whole food plant-based, I lost weight, got to my goal weight. And then about, it might've been like a year later, I started having unexpected weight gain as well as a lot of other symptoms. I went and got a physical and had some testing done, found out I had hypothyroidism. And even after I went on the levothyroxine to correct the thyroid, I still couldn't lose the weight that I had gained because of the hypothyroidism until I joined Chef AJ's Ultimate Weight Loss Plan. And I highly recommend her book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. This is the whole food plan that I followed then to be able to lose the weight, get back to a size four, and it's how I eat today to maintain it. It's how Tom eats. What are you smirking about? Oh, I'm catching some heat here on the thread. Oh. I was reading back, getting ready in my head, some questions to keep track of for when Tammy was done with this last tenth tip here. And so I was up in the thread reading all these comments. When, oh, when people were saying like we can't hear her? 50 people are trying to tell me. Oh. And then somebody said, ground control to <laughs> Major Tom. That, That's cute. I appreciate that humor. Thank you. That's cute. So I, I highly recommend this book. I think it's only about $17 on Amazon. And it is just, it's like a weight loss Bible. It's amazing. And I love all the recipes that are in it. It's great. So this is the food plan that I follow. There's a calorie density chart on the back of it. Uh, I'll have Tom link to Chef AJ's calorie density video. Um, also Jeff Novak, a, a whole food plant-based dietitian. He has one on calorie density also on YouTube. And I think that once I learned about calorie density, two things, once I learned about calorie density and I learned about the pleasure trap, then I totally understood why I had been a yo-yo dieter for almost 40 years. And these two books explained it all to me. Is my battery going dead? No, it's still good. Oh, okay. So these two books explained everything to me that I needed to know to be able to lose the weight once and for all and to be able to maintain it, which I, I did like every diet possible, I think, 
every fad diet. And I could lose the weight, but I could never maintain it for very long. Be and I found out it's because I couldn't eat the standard American diet foods in moderation. I couldn't eat all the processed foods and the high fat, sugar, salt foods. So um, that was just like life changing for me. So these would be the three books that I would highly recommend for anyone is these three books. Are they all on? Yeah. Yeah, some so, people have sound back, but not everybody. So check the sound on your video. Uh, maybe refresh, refresh or, the yeah, page. Yeah, refresh the page so it comes back but up. But if they can't hear us, you just need to say that. You need to type it, I think. Yeah. You need to type it. So so anyway, these, these books are just amazing. They're full of incredible information that really helped me understand how I needed to eat, that I needed to eat low calorie density foods, but I need to keep starch in my diet. So potatoes, rice, quinoa, uh, oats, oat groats, you know, you've got to have the starch to have satiety to feel full. And the wonderful thing about what Dr. Steve Lewenda calls the magical buffet of a whole food plant-based lifestyle is that you can eat as much as you want until you're comfortably full. Now that's the key, until you're comfortably full. So you need to eat slow enough to realize, oh, I'm full, and then stop. Because certainly you could overeat on whole food plant foods, and you could gain weight if you're eating past the point of being comfortably full. So once you learn that though, it's so amazing because like I don't have to think about what I'm gonna eat. I'm not thinking about, oh, I shouldn't have that or I should only have this or, you know, I take a plate of food, I eat when I'm full, I stop eating. You know, I can be eating my salad and I'll get to a certain point and if I'm full, then I just put the lid on and put it in the refrigerator and save it for later and you know we're never like starving because we are constantly not constantly because we only eat at meal time but we are always uh, fueling our body with nutrients and so it's not sending out the signal to eat all the time because we're giving it what it wants we're we're feeding it properly okay do you have some questions for me I will need to scroll back. One question I have for the group, we lost about five minutes actually because I was up getting questions ready and I didn't see the bottom. I also had to take care of a couple of trolls. Uh oh. Um, and you were kind of talking about, Marsha, any tips for stalled weight loss? So I don't know if anybody, if, I don't know if we lost. This, tips for stalled weight loss. Can somebody, can somebody, does anybody know where we stopped, where the volume? went off. What she was talking Did about. you hear me talk about tips for stalled weight loss? That would be good and, to know. And then I'm going to go back up here to where my my where I left off. Okay. It's 3:58. We've been on almost an hour. Yeah, we do have we do have a few questions to okay. catch up with here. We try not to go over an hour. We do we get a few complaints from people wishing that our videos were shorter, but I just say, you know, I have so much to say it's hard for me to condense things or to leave a lot of things out because I just feel like I, I want to be thorough. So I, I do get a lot of emails from people and the private Facebook messages about weight loss. I know this is a huge concern for people. And once I read these books and joined the Ultimate Weight Loss Group and learned everything that I learned, it was like, oh my gosh, we need to share this. We need to let people know. Okay, I found my, I found my place. Okay, good. Um, would you be, this is from Terry, would you be able to address calcium requirements in the whole food plant-based diet? We get lots of calcium. Yeah, as There's long- There's no shortage. No, there isn't. As, you know, lentils, spinach, I mean, there's calcium in a All lot the of things. All cruciferous vegetables. If you just Google it, you'll see as long as you're taking in an adequate amount of calories to fuel your body, you should be getting enough calcium. So the only supplement and, we take is B12. Yeah. Okay. That, and that most of the plant-based doctors also tell you that B12 
and maybe some vitamin D, depending on where you live and how much exposure you have to being outside. Those are usually the only two things that people eating this way would need to supplement with. Okay. So, but that's also something that you should have a talk with your doctor about. And if your doctor is not educated about a plant-based lifestyle, you can get a phone consult with some of the plant-based doctors. I know the doctors at True North Health Center, that's True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, California. They will do phone or Skype type consults. Uh, I think it's around $100. So that would be a really good question. You know, I, I don't know what your diet is or what your health is, and I'm not a medical professional. So I would suggest that you um, consult with a plant-based doctor. What containers do we freeze our things in for the freezer? Yeah, we use the yeah we use um, some Gladware, uh, no Rubbermaid, Rubbermaid containers that, that are soups. We put them in four cup Rubbermaid containers. They're the ones with red lids. If you go to the blog, Nutmeg Notebook, and do a search for batch cooking, then my batch cooking. Uh, I have a video, one video. I think, and a bunch of blog posts on it, and you'll see the containers that we use. I think they're also on our Amazon affiliate page. So that's amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash nutmeg notebook. And we have a whole page, and it's filled with all the wonderful things that we use. So usually at the bottom of a blog post on the blog is a link to our affiliate link so that you can see the kinds of things that we use. If you don't have a lot of freezer space. You can take the Ziploc freezer bags. You can put soup in like the quart one or the gallon size, depending on how you need to portion it out. And those will lay flat and then you can stack a lot of those. You can get a lot more of those in a small space than you can the four cup containers that we use. Uh, an answer for Pat on the oat groats. Um, she's asking what are oat groats. There is a video if you'll, if you'll go back into YouTube search window and put in nutmeg, notebook, oat groats. Mm -hmm. There's an entire video, and Tammy goes into the background of oat groats and also how to cook them. Yeah. Our next question is about, um, uh, I, I know that we don't have a favorite balls. How many do we have? Probably 15 different flavors. Mm -hmm. And we stir them around quite a bit. My favorite probably is the sweet heat mm -hmm. because I, I have a Mexican, I, I make a chopped salad Mexican style and so I do put sweet heat on it probably that's the one I use the most that's probably my one of my favorites too but this summer the the dill mustard seed was so good it's been so good on everything so wide variety it just depends on your personal taste and what you like that I haven't tasted any of them that I didn't like I'll tell you that so and another one if you don't have that as an option is the Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve. And it also is a 4% acidity reduced balsamic that's thick and syrupy. And it's more readily available in some grocery stores. Some It's at our Whole Foods sells it. Sprouts was selling it. You can also find it online. I think it's also on our Amazon page. And I know that outside of the U.S., people have a little more difficulty finding some of the reduced balsamics, but I know that some of the people in Canada say if you look for an olive oil store, they usually have balsamic vinegars as well because kind of the two go together. And so if you do a search, a Google search for where you live and look for some olive oil stores, their specialty shops, they also might have flavored vinegars. You just want to make sure that they don't add sugar to them. Yes. Um, our favorite, this is from uh, uh, Charis, Charis Vargas. Our favorite dressing is Tammy's Creamy Balsamic Dressing, which is, uh, you can find that in the Nutmeg Notebook blog. The recipe is in there. We also have a video on the YouTube yeah. channel for creamy and balsamic then, And then for subscribers to dressing. the Nutmeg Notebook blog, you mm -hmm. get a, a variation on that theme. Mm -hmm. You do. Uh, so so go to the blog, nutmegnotebook.com, 
and fill in the subscribe. And once you subscribe to the blog, you are immediately sent a link for the PDFs for two exclusive recipes that are only for subscribers. And one of them is an absolutely delicious so, salad so, dressing. So other than those, uh, the, other than all the vinegars, those are our two favorite dressings, as well as the barefoot dressing that Chef AJ came up with quite mm -hmm. a while ago. Yeah, Chef AJ has some good dressing recipes in her book as well that are so good. And then we like to use the vinegars. We like to use lime juice. And, you know, once we've, our salsa, we love to use salsa in our salads instead of a dressing. And if you put some fruit in there, then you don't need as much dressing. And see my Tammy's top tips for making delicious chopped salads because we also have a video on that and I give you all my secrets. Do we use mushrooms in our cooking? This yeah. is from... Mm -hmm. um, we do, we love mushrooms. Yeah. We do, we love mushrooms. So in fact, we've, we've Ravine. got, Ravine we've got a whole container that we have to cook up tonight because we're leaving tomorrow and we didn't get them eaten. But yes, we love mushrooms. We saute them and put them in all kinds of things. They're delicious. Uh, do we eat a lot of grain? That message is from Yvette. Well, Tom eats rice almost every day. I don't eat as many grains per se that he does because I find for me that potatoes are more satiating. So I usually have a Japanese sweet potato that has been pre-baked and then I cut it in half and air fry it. I usually have that every day in my salad. And Tom loves rice. So he, I think you like rice more than potatoes. So I, I tend to stick more to potatoes, but I did have wild rice in my salad at lunch today because I like how chewy and nutty that is. So, and then we, I have a lot of salads on my blog that are made with quinoa. So I really do enjoy quinoa. So we also follow a gluten-free diet because I, I don't have celiac. I have one of the genes for celiac. So I have a gluten sensitivity. And also when you're hypothyroid, doctors do suggest that you avoid gluten. And so we you know, are careful about the grains that we eat. Yes. Okay, do we make any dessert type foods besides eating fruits? Yes. Also, we, do you eat tofu? Uh, I don't eat very much tofu just because I, ha I gain weight really, really easily. And so I tend to stay away from the higher calorie density foods and especially the foods that have a higher fat content. Tom likes tofu and you eat it maybe a couple times a week. A couple times a week. I'll, I'll have half, half of a... Half of a Brick, brick from from the the extra firm whatever yeah. brand from Whole Foods. You know yeah. he's a man. He can eat more calories than me, and he can also eat more fat. So um, Dr. Roseanne Oliveira has two really great videos where she was interviewed by Chef AJ. So they're on Chef AJ's channel on YouTube, and she talks about how if you've previously been a yo-yo dieter even once you get to your ideal weight, you have to eat 25% less calories than someone your same age, height, and weight who has never yo-yo dieted. So isn't that amazing? You have to eat 25% less calories. So I'm gonna eat lower calorie density foods so that I get to have a full plate. And I just find that fascinating. So I know for me, if I'm eating a more high calorie foods, more foods that have a higher fat content, that that's going to cause the scale to go up for me. My pants are going to get tight. You know, I can feel it. And so um, there's nothing wrong with tofu, nuts, seeds, avocado, nut butters. Those are all, you know, well, except for nut butters nut butters have been processed, but there's nothing wrong with the higher fat foods. If I could eat them and not gain weight, I certainly would because I do love all of those things, but, um, but I don't, I don't honestly, I don't miss them because I love the food that I do get to eat. So, so if, if you're getting results, if you are at a healthy weight 
and you can eat those foods, then by all means do. If you're trying to lose weight, then it's a good idea to maybe eliminate those and see what happens. Uh, the B12, there's a question um, about what B12 we use. Is it a, from one, uh, from one comment here and then another one, is it uh, organic and, and free of other additives? I don't know. Yeah, ours is vegan. You want to make sure you get a vegan one. If you go to nutritionfacts.org there you go. and uh, Google, or not Google, do a search on nutrition facts dot org and you will find a lot of videos all about b12 and you can get your answer there okay uh, question about omega-3s getting enough omega-3 fatty acids in our diet yeah um, chef aj just recently um, did an interview with dr goldhammer from the true north health center in santa rosa and it's not on YouTube, I don't believe, because I think she did it for one of the private groups that I'm in. And he said that as long as you're eating a wide variety of dark leafy greens and eating a health-promoting, whole food, plant-based diet, that you should be getting all of your omega-3s that you need, but you can supplement if you need to. There's flaxseed, you can do you know, the mm -hmm. ground flaxseed, you can put a tablespoon of it over your morning cereal, you can put it on a salad, you can mix it into veggie burgers. Um, you know, it's very easy to supplement for that. And you can also get tested to see if you are low in it and if you need to take it. And he suggests that no one take any vitamin except B12 if you're eating this way without knowing what your levels are because why supplement if you really don't need to so and but there's purslane you can buy purslane it's very inexpensive it's a green it actually looks like a weed it doesn't taste too bad you can chop it up raw or cook it and it's very high in omega-3s um, Kelly is asking do you incorporate any type of exercise plan into your weight loss journey or was the weight loss mostly from a whole food plant-based lifestyle well what the what the professionals will tell you is that you do not lose weight in the gym that you lose weight at the table so it's really about the food but yes I, I exercise I have exercised daily I think since 2002 so I, exercise is very important. You want to be firm and toned and you want to work your heart, your um, vascular system. You want to do aerobic exercise as well as anaerobic exercise. And certainly as we age, especially for women, we need to be doing weight resistance training so that we can keep prevent- Keep your bones strong. That's right, keep your bones strong and prevent osteoporosis. So I do all of those things. Tom and I get up. The first thing we do in the morning is we go for a four mile walk outside. Um, if it's here where we live in Northern California, it doesn't snow in the winter, we just get rain. So if it's pouring rain, if it's not too bad, we'll put on our uh, wet, um, what do I want to say, our water resistant hiking rain, gear. Raincoats. And yeah. our raincoats and we'll take an umbrella and we'll walk in the rain. If it's a gusty wind with it and we can't walk outside, we will go to the mall and walk at the mall. We also do a little bit of resistance training with hand weights that we have. And um, so, and I do that. I try to do that three times a week. Sometimes I only get it in twice, but I try to do it three times a week. We love to hike, so it's been too hot the last month for us to go hiking here, but we love to go hiking and we live close to the Sierras. So we go up into the foothills where we get lots of elevation and we like that long, slow burn that several hours of hiking gives us. So we do that and I have a problem with a sciatic nerve. So we haven't been able to do our bike ride, bike riding, but we also love to do bike riding. So we like to incorporate a variety of activities 
and we get usually around 14, 15,000 steps a day, just a normal day. So we do our walk and then we are so active during the day that you know we don't have much time to sit. And so we're moving, moving, moving. And so movement is very important. It's very important to reduce stress. It's important to prevent depression. It just, I mean, I need, it's a mood stabilizer for me. Mm -hmm. So Tom, you know, always is like, oh, yeah, you need to go for your walk. And we try not to let other activities take over our morning walk. Even if we have a really crazy, busy, hectic day scheduled, we still get up and we go for that walk because it actually gives us more energy and helps Once us, yeah, and helps us get through the stress and the busyness. Um, Betty's asking about where she can find the salt and oil-free sun-dried tomatoes. A Trader Whole, Joe's has them, and, and so does yeah, Whole Foods. Yeah, Whole Foods in her area doesn't, but another uh, Deborah's suggesting she try Trader Joe's. Yeah, try Trader Joe's. Yeah, and the, now the, that Amazon owns Whole Foods, a lot of things show up on Amazon that are available at Whole Foods. So check that out too and okay. see that. And if you have a health food store near you, check a health food store as well. Okay, a while ago, earlier up in the stream, and I... I I have it in my head, but I don't remember who asked. There was a question about what we sub into Italian uh, profile dishes instead of what we used to use. Uh, oh, well, I, we do the zucchini noodles. Well, the, 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 so with the spiralizer. The meat replacement that we use. Oh, well, we just, you know, we're happy with just tomato sauce. Or what Tom really likes is to cook up some lentils in the Instant Pot. And just the, you know, regular green brown, just the plain inexpensive lentils, cook those and then pour those, you know, drain the water off if there's any extra water and then put those in the marinara sauce. And that gives you a nice thick, what kind of looks meaty sauce and it does make it more filling. So, so that, yeah, and those are, they're, it's very good. Yeah, it's delicious. So you just want to look for an oil-free marinara. I know Trader Joe's has one, but it does have added sugar in it. And then there is an Engine 2 one that's sold at Whole Foods that is really good, and it's oil-free. And then, of course, you can make your own, you know, just buy the strained tomatoes or tomato puree and add some seasonings and garlic and things, Italian seasoning to it, and you can make a delicious one. I don't have a recipe for it yet, but... Um, we'll have to make one. Um, where we lost sound, we were just covering the caffeine. We had just talked about caffeine, which was your tent. And so I'm going to assume that we did not have sound when we were talking about Marsha's question about... Oh, hers was first. Hers was before that. Before number 10. We were talking about me being off of caffeine in March when we lost the sound. Yeah, and then I think... Oh, did I... I don't know what order I did them. So, but I think I touched on... Did, I, did you guys hear me talk about tips for stalled weight loss? Can somebody let us know? Because I don't, I don't want to repeat if we've already got it on there. So if anybody was on earlier when we lost sound, did before we lost sound, did we talk about... Ravine says no, she did not hear it. You didn't hear it? Okay, so um, someone asked about what to do if your weight loss has stalled. And so I was saying if your weight loss has truly stalled, they say it has to be like at Thank least you. six weeks. Um, in order to consider it an actual plateau, plateau. But also you have to know, like if you're exercising and upping your game on exercise or doing resistance training, that you could be toning, you could be adding muscle. And if you're doing that, but you're also losing weight, it may not show up on the scale. So you kind of have to judge like, you know, are my clothes a little bit looser? You have to kind of look at that. Then, uh, Dr. I'm losing my thought. Uh, Dr. Lyle has a video where he talks about equilibrium, and sometimes we reach a point where our weight loss does plateau because we've reached a point of equilibrium, and so we need to change something up. So you either need to move more so that you're burning some more calories and just get things moving and up your metabolism, or maybe you need to make a dietary change. 
So my suggestion is to eat more vegetables, eat more of the low calorie density foods, because if you're eating the low calorie density foods, you have first, you have less room for the high calorie density foods. So this is called sequencing. So you start with your raw vegetables first at a meal, let's say, then you would have steamed or cooked vegetables, and then you would have your starch. Now the nice thing about doing that too, when you're in weight loss mode, is if you start with the starch first, you are so gonna wanna finish all of that starch, and then maybe not go back to the raw salad or the raw vegetables. But if you start with the salad first, you'll eat all of that because you're hungry and it just tastes so good and you know the best seasoning is hunger and so when you eat that raw salad and you're really hungry it's just going to taste so amazing to you and then you move on to the cooked vegetables and then the oh whoa the cooked vegetables taste really good too and by the time you get done with those cooked vegetables and the raw vegetables you've started to fill up your tummy and the stretch receptors in your tummy are getting engaged and they're telling your brain, we're starting to get full. And that happens before you start eating the high calorie density food, which is your starch. So that would be, you know, then you would eat your starch and then you could have your beans or your veggie burger or whatever. So you're gonna have less room for the high calorie density foods because you filled up on the low calorie density foods. And that might just be what you need to change the equilibrium and to get the scale moving again. So I would try that. I would make sure that I was, you know, getting enough sleep, that I'm drinking enough water. I mean, there's so many things that cause a variable in weight loss, but try eating more vegetables. Most people mm -hmm. aren't eating enough vegetables. Um, let's finish up with the caffeine. Oh, and thing. then the, and then the lower calorie density foods too. Cut out the things that have the higher fat: the tofu, the avocado, the like nuts, the seeds, mm -hmm. yeah. like Tom did. And then um, that can also be a really big factor because that little extra fat can make the difference between it getting. Because our bodies, especially for women, our bodies our little fat storage systems. You know, we have estrogen and our body wants to hold on to the fat. And so, you know, it's not like the men. The men can lose weight much easier, even if they're eating a few of the higher fat foods. And then and, uh, we also got cut off. You were talking about me. Uh, I stopped drinking coffee in March of this year. Uh, I had been more to more than one seminar that talked about mm -hmm. um, you know, caffeine can end up being a, a false metabolism in the first place, mm -hmm. um, but it had to do with what it does to your inability to sleep soundly and to refresh your brain as you're sleeping, that the half-life of caffeine is much longer than you might expect. And even though, like 14 hours? Even though you think it may not be keeping you awake, it, it gets in the way of deep sleep, which is where your brain really processes and repairs and refreshes itself. So with that in mind, um, I moved away from the caffeine. I also was a slave to it every morning and had this entire ritual of making and drinking this coffee. It was costing me a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm able to get up in the morning and be productive right away, go on the walk right away. Um, Don't have that foggy brain. Like I used to wake up and I'd be like, oh, Tom, you know, what are we going to do today? And he'd be like, I'm not ready to talk yet. Tammy, let me have my coffee. You know, and I'd be all like excited and I'd want to schedule the day for us. And he'd be yeah. like, I am so, not ready for so this. So that, that wasn't easy. Um, and it took me a while. I transitioned slowly off of it. I kept reducing the amount little by little. Um, so Because it was a migraine trigger. When yeah, you, so I had like, to be careful Like a it. year before he had tried and it was triggering migraines all the time. And so he gave up and but you had reduced the a amount. A cold start isn't advisable for everyone. But now I wake up in the morning, I look forward to my herbal tea. I have one cup of herbal tea and then we, and then we hit the road on the walk. Um, there were quite a few uh, comments in the chat scroll today and I'm sure I did not catch all of them, especially with the sound issue. So if, you would, if, if there's something you want us to cover, you can put it in the comments of this video after it's uploaded. You can go in and do comments on the video itself. Um, and then we'll catch them there. We do go back through the video and, and read the comments. So if there's something that uh, resonates uh, 
to do a future uh, conversation about, then we'll make a note of that. Yeah, if you have so. ideas for us for topics, we're looking for topics, not recipes that you want, although you can send a request for that. But if there's a topic that you'd like us to cover on our Tuesday with Tammy and sometimes Tom, because we're not doing recipes and that kind of thing here. We're trying to cover topics, lifestyle topics about eating a whole food plant-based lifestyle or weight loss, things that we can you know, devote like an hour to rather than just like a single recipe. The recipes we still do, we do those on the videos and the blog, but you can email us at Tammy or Tom, you can do Tammy or Tom at Nutmeg Notebook, or you can send us a Facebook message on Nutmeg Notebook, uh, or you can leave a comment here on the video and also if you live locally in the sacramento california area do check on meetup.com for our classes because we are now starting to hold some weight loss classes in our home in the fall we have one starting this september we'll have another one in january and then another one uh, sometime in the spring we haven't set the date for that yet those will be four week long classes we are certified by chef aj to teach her ultimate weight loss program in home and you get 16 hours of instruction for that so check that out if you would also there's information on the blog about it you can just do a search on our blog and we have a blog post up with our schedule on there if you are we done are we done or do you have more we need to be done. It's, we do. It's, it's been almost four thirty, yeah, and we're leaving for Vegas tomorrow. So we've we've, we've got to pack. We've, Let's go. Well, we've <laughs> packed, but we've got some loose ends to tie up around here. We want to thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate. Oh. We we have the best audience yeah, one, ever. One question from Pat. The, yes. the class. Uh, this is a message from Pat. The class is local in the Sacramento area. Go to nutmegnotebook.com. And there is a blog post about the local class at that at that place. Yeah, click on the blog and scroll down a little bit, and you'll see it. It's one or two blog posts back. So yeah, this is this is it's not an online program. It is for local Sacramento people. Uh, we live in Roseville. It'll be in Roseville, and it's an in person where you you come to our home and. For four Saturdays in a row. 16 hours of instruction, yeah. all meals included Yeah, we'll, over four Saturdays. Yeah. yeah, you'll get your evening meal. I'll be cooking for you. The September one this year, Chef AJ will be in attendance at on the fourth class, so we're pretty excited about that. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. That helps our ratings here on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And next to the channel is a little icon of a bell. If you click on that bell, then you'll get notifications every time we go live or we have a new video up. And as Tom mentioned earlier, go over to the blog, nutmegnotebook.com if you haven't already, and subscribe. There's a little tab at the top. You click on that, fill it in with your name and your email address, and you will get an email with a link to the PDF for two exclusive recipes that are for subscribers only. And a lot of people tell us that those are two of their favorite recipes. So do that and check out the blog because we have hundreds of recipes on there that we have yet to make videos for. There's just not enough time. And we will be in Vegas. We'll see everyone who's going to the Ultimate Weight Loss Live Vegas program. Thank you for watching today. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay, stay healthy, healthy one meal, meal at a time. time. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.